good afternoon um so today is going to be kind of like a follow-up from yesterday so yesterday we were talking about the posture of prayer today the lord wants me to talk about the power of confession the power of confession um let's go to first john chapter 1 verse 9 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there's a stipulation here. God is faithful. We know he's faithful. We know that he is as faithful as they come and just to forgive us our sins if we confess them we have to confess them in order to be cleansed from all unrighteousness so i want to talk about confession just for a moment so confession in greek means recognition acknowledgement profession or admission so basically recognizing and acknowledging it as sin, right? Admitting our guilt, admitting our rebellion against the Lord. Um, the word confess in Greek means to know or to make known, to declare openly, to concede, to not deny, to profess. So that's what it means to confess. And that's what he's telling us to do in this passage. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to what? Forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we have to confess. Psalm 32, 1 to 2. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose heart there is no deceit amen we're gonna go to another one isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 come now let us reason together though your sins are like scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they are red like crimson they shall be as wool let us reason together. Let, let us talk about this. State your case to me. Admit your guilt. Admit your rebellion. Admit that you don't always get it right. And that you need God's forgiveness today. We need God's forgiveness and mercy every day. And how many of us know that his mercy is new the minute you wake up? Amen? Amen. Proverbs 28, 13, he who conceals his transgression will not prosper. He who conceals his transgression. So this indicates to us that we can't keep it hidden. We can't keep it hidden. We can't keep it quiet. We can't keep it secret. And we're going to talk about in a little bit what would cause us to do that. It says, will not prosper will not succeed but whoever confesses and not only confesses but renounces in other versions it says forsakes them will find compassion in other versions it says mercy so we have to bring our concealed transgressions out in the open by admitting where we are battling what we struggle with openly Psalm 32, 3, when I kept silent about my sin, listen to this very closely. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. There is something about hiding sin, about secret sin, about repetitive sin that nobody knows about but you something behind closed doors that can actually cause your body to waste away 
Why? Because you're under this continuous cloud of what? Guilt and shame. A continuous cloud of guilt and shame. Why? Because you will not acknowledge that guilt to be freed from it. So this happens because of guilt, humiliation, shame, or also pride. Pride. We keep silent about our sin because we don't want anybody to know what we're dealing with. We want everybody to think that we're okay 24-7 all the time because we're Christians, so we could never have a problem, right? No, that's not true. That's not true, and you know that's not true. So keeping silent about our sin does not benefit or prosper us in the slightest. It actually causes disease and sickness. It says, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. It's like an inner anguish because you have this secret, but you can't share it with somebody um, either out of pride, guilt, humiliation, or shame. I mean, it's so embarrassing to admit that you actually did such a thing. But there's freedom in confession. Amen. Psalm 38, 18, for I confess my iniquity. The next line tells us what happens if we don't. I am full of anxiety because of my sin. Anxiety is fear-based. Anxiety is when you can't shut your mind off. Your mind is racing all day long. The thoughts just keep coming, all kinds of intrusive thoughts. Why? Because of my sin. Hidden sin will actually make you anxious, restless, fearful. Fearful of what? Number one, being found out. If you're concealing it from not just yourself or the people at the church, but somebody else. And exposure of that sin could cause all kinds of repercussions. And you've already weighed out in your mind through these repetitive thoughts what those scenarios could be. And it's causing you anxiety. Why? Because you've, you've constantly got this, this what if playing in the back of your mind. What if I'm found out? What if this gets out? What if my secret is no longer a secret anymore? But when I confess my iniquity, I'm free from those things. So here we see that unconfessed, unresolved, unacknowledged sin produces anxiety, panic, panic attacks. Psalm 32, 5, I acknowledged my sin to you and my iniquity I did not hide. So first we have to acknowledge that it is sin. We have to acknowledge that we actually did something wrong. We have to acknowledge that we um, backslid or we have to acknowledge that, yes, this has become a problem for me and I no longer have control over it. And my iniquity, I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Keep that in mind. I will confess my transgressions and after I do, you forgive the guilt of my sin. God liberates us from the guilt associated and attached to that sin. And how many of us know that guilt is not a good feeling? Who doesn't want to be liberated? Who doesn't want to be set free? from the guilt of your sin. And he tells us how to do it. Acknowledge it's a sin and don't hide it. Don't conceal it. Don't pretend like it's not there, like you're not struggling, like you have no battles. I spoke about this briefly yesterday, but we're also told to confess our sins to each other. James 5.16 says, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. 
So we're supposed to confess our sins to our, our brothers and sisters in Christ so that we can pray for each other. Because if I don't know what's going on in your life and you don't know what's going on in mine, we can't pray for each other so that we may be healed. See, what's done in the dark has to actually come to the light. I need you to understand that whatever we keep in the dark is under Satan's dominion. Whatever we keep in the dark is under Satan's dominion. He still has a grip on it in your life. It's bondage. But when it's confessed, when it's acknowledged, when it's renounced, when it's repented of, when we've asked for forgiveness and we brought it out of the darkness into the Lord's marvelous light, Satan no longer has dominion anymore. He has to lose his grip. He has to lose his hold on you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What's done in the dark must come to the light. Some of you by concealing or trying to hide the sins they're battling with are actually blocking your own blessing. You're blocking your own blessing of being healed from it. First John 1 John 1.8 If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now I know there's, there's many, many of us that acknowledge that we're a sinner, right? We, we know we're not perfect. We know the only one that's perfect is Jesus Christ, right? God is the only one that's perfect in this equation. So if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But we also deceive ourselves if we don't acknowledge that it is sin. Or if we try to justify it, even though we know what God's word says. That's another way that we deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves by looking for doctrine um, that supports what it is that we want to continue doing. Doctrines of devils, when we are constantly looking for something that justifies that I can continue living a certain way or doing a certain thing. But we know what God's word says. At least, hopefully we do. So it says we, that's, that's the way we deceive ourselves and that the truth is not in us. What, what truth is this referring to? This is referring to the spirit of truth. If, 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 if we say we have no sin, the spirit of truth does not live in us. Who is the spirit of truth? The Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? The one who actually convicts us of sin. Part, part of the God Godhead. We serve a triune God. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. The Holy Spirit is the one who comes to dwell in every born again believer. So it's saying here, if we say we have no sin, the Holy Spirit is not in us. What else, what else is, is the truth referring to in this passage? Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It's saying Jesus is not in us. If, if we can't even acknowledge that we are a sinner. 1 Corinthians 3, 18 to 20. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you thinks he is wise in this age, he must become foolish so that he may become wise. Admit you don't have all the answers. For the wisdom of this world is foolish before God. For it is written, he is the one who catches the wise in our own craftiness. I'll give you an example of this craftiness. It's when we think we are wise by saying, point out to me in the Bible where it says specifically that I can't smoke cigarettes. Right? Because we want to justify to continue with that habit. But the Bible does say that our body is a temple and we should treat it as such. And cigarettes are known to cause lung cancer. So are we really treating our body as a temple if we continue to smoke? Just because the Bible doesn't say, thou shall not smoke cigarettes. See, uh, all, all things are not beneficial. All things are not profitable. And we know this. 
But sometimes we use our own wisdom and our own craftiness to try to wiggle our way in somehow to find a loophole <laughs> in God's word to say, well, it doesn't actually say that in the Bible, so I'm not doing anything wrong. It doesn't use those exact words, so you're, you're adding to what the Lord said. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness before God. For it is written, he is the one who catches the wise in our own craftiness. There's another version that says, he uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. We get trapped in our own wisdom. And again, the Lord knows the reasonings of the wise, that they are useless. Luke 5, 22 to 23, Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking and said, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? The Greek word for reasoning is rumination, rationale. Logic, explanation, plotting, deliberating, questioning, doubting. Let me give you an example of how we would do this. God knows my heart. God knows what my struggles are. Why do I need to tell them to you? God knows what I need. Just, just, just pray and, um, and, and I'll get whatever it is that I need because God already knows. I, I don't need to bring this out in the open. Some things are just too personal. This might be used against me later. These are all reasonings, doubt, logic, deliberating, explanation. Is it really that big of a deal? Is the sin really that big of a deal? It's not like I do it all the time. I, I only vape when I, when I get stressed. Everybody sins. Nobody's perfect, right? This is true. None of us are perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. But God promises us freedom from our bondage. He, he promises that we are becoming a new creation and that we will do so from glory to glory. He promises to burst our bonds apart. But in order to do that, in order to burst our bonds apart, we have to admit our guilt. We have to confess our sin. We have to acknowledge it. We have to declare it. We have to profess it. We have to bring it out in the open. We have to stop hiding it. The first thing Adam and Eve did in the garden when they rebelled against God was hide from him. And, and that's, that's our MO, right? That's like our default response. I've done something I know God doesn't approve of. So rather than run to him and, and renounce it and ask for forgiveness and ask him to create in me a clean heart and, and fill me with, you know, let my med meditations of my heart, of my thoughts and my heart be pleasing in your sight, oh God. Instead of doing that, we run in the opposite direction. We hide from him as if we could hide our sin from him, as if he doesn't see everything, as if he doesn't know what our thoughts are from day to day. Uh, Jesus perceived their thoughts while they were thinking them. He, he knew what they were going to think. Okay, so we can't, we can't hide from him. We can't hide from God, but we try. The next thing they did was cover up their nakedness. Why? Because all of a sudden they realized they were naked and they felt exposed. And confessing our sins to another person, another brother or sister in Christ, it requires vulnerability. It requires a certain level of trust. And maybe you've been burned so many times that um, you don't trust like you once did. Maybe you're suspicious of everyone. Maybe you're very wary of opening up to another person. They hid out of fear and guilt. They tried to cover up their shame. But how many of us know you can't cover up shame? You can't cover up 
shame. Shame is actually birthed from secrecy. Lying. Not confessing, not acknowledging. Hiding things from people. When we when we try to hide or pretend that something isn't happening or hasn't happened, it produces shame. So the word for today that I, I want to leave you with is the freedom is in the admission. The freedom is in the confession. And don't worry about what other people are going to think of you. Just think of the freedom that is at the end of your tongue. Just by admitting, yes, this happened. Yes, I am not pleased with myself. Yes, I could have done better. Yes, I could have handled this differently. But I'm bringing it out to the open, the open because I want to be free from the guilt that I've carried for harboring this. The guilt that I've carried, the shame that I've carried, the humiliation that I've carried. God wants you to let, he, want, he wants you to be able to let that go. He wants you to walk in freedom. The freedom is in the confession.